plus 180 underdog is Pedro Munoz. Surprising. And it almost makes me less enthusiastic about Chris Gutierrez in this one because at a minus 220 favor, man, are they just we just counting out Pedro Munoz now? We're just saying he can't fight or something like that? Like, what has Chris Gutierrez done, in my, in your opinion, what has Chris Gutierrez done in his career thus far to have a minus 115 prop for a decision win against a talented kickboxer like Pedro Munoz and a jiu-jitsu black belt? What do you think? Hmm. As far as what has Chris Gutierrez done, he, I mean, he is a great fighter. Don't get me wrong, yeah, Derek. And I don't want to take anything away from Gutierrez on this one because, yes, he has great striking. He's an all-around quick fighter. He's he's mentally stay, like smart. He knows how to play the game and to win the fight. But I think this is a little more of a narrative going into this, man. Pedro Muno is the old dog. Struggles against these young dudes coming up. Struggles against the speed, the flash, the technique, the people that just have a quick step on him. That's what Pedro Muniz struggles with. Even with the draw and the Sean O'Malley, Dominic Cruz lost, Jose Aldo. Even though he's an old dog, Jose Aldo's quick. This is another one where uh, um, Garcia or Gutierrez, excuse me, Frankie Edgar, TKO, KO. What was it? A knee. That right there, I think, is what a lot of people are remembering Gutierrez for, and not so much his storied career, but what has he done for us lately? That's a hell of a knockout on, a, on an old-school mm-hmm. dog in Frankie Edgar, and now he's faced with another old-school dog in Pedro Munoz who's been suffering against the younger up-and-comers. I think that goes into play. Are you seeing the same thing, or do you see a, a wealth of knowledge and experience coming out of the Gutierrez camp? What I'm seeing here, man, is that Chris Gutierrez is on a hell of a win streak right now. Seven fights in a row, and then he lost to Haley Barcelos, and then if you want to start that streak up again, it goes pretty far again, man. Like, he has won the fights, and he's done them in impressive fashion as of late. Frankie Edgar knee, uh, Dana Bakari, that was one where I was picking Bakari on that one, spinning back fists and elbows. That was a, that was a back-and-forth fight. Felipe Colares, Andre Ewell, Vince Morales, but that's kind of the other point that I'm making. L- listen to those names that I just rattled off, and then Pedro Munoz. Sean O'Malley, Dominic Cruz, Jose Aldo, Jimmy Rivera, Frankie Edgar. Like, you're talking champions. You're talking about the cream of the crop, even if they are a little bit older, right? Al Jermaine Sterling, Cody Garbrandt, Brett Johns, John Dodson, Brian Caraway. It's just, when you compare the lists, it's not really comparable. But I will say, I'm not just a big fan of Chris Gutierrez. He's earned the respect of all of us. I'm a fan of that camp, man. That Factory X camp is just something else right now, man. And I do think he can capitalize on the elder statesmanship of a Pedro Munoz, you know what I mean? Like, all respect. I think that he can capitalize on that. But my thing is that at the end of the day, in in its finest glory, this is probably going to be a kickboxing match, right? So in a kickboxing match, what did we see Pedro Munoz against Sean O'Malley? We didn't really see much, but Pedro Munoz was able to kind of freeze O'Malley from doing anything for the whole entire first round. So if they can go tit for tat, and it can be close on points, I mean, this is a tailor-made fight, both of these guys, right? You're 100% correct, Derek, and I think that's exactly what we're going to see right here is a standing battle. Both dudes sharpening their tool set and going to work that night. And, I mean, Pedro Munoz, I think what um, surprises everybody about him when they fight him, this dude is wiry. You don't expect mm-hmm. him to be as strong as he is, as stiff he is. He takes the shots, and like you said, froze Sean O'Malley for a little bit. I mean, Sean got going, the fight happened, it ends in a draw, it is what it is, but Munoz is never a dog to be counted out, even though he's on that little bit of a lost streak, he has the age against him. There's a lot of narrative going into this fight, man, but it's a lot more than that when you're thinking about this one. Yeah, and just to be clear, it wasn't a draw that ended um, in that O'Malley Munoz fight. It was no contest from the eye poke. So, yeah, man, there was a nut shot, there was an eye poke. It was weird. It was a weird fight. But <laughs> basically, man, the odds makers are giving no chance to Munoz. Yeah, plus 180 underdog, not terrible, but plus 650 for the TKO, plus 850 for a submission, plus 350 for a decision. They're not really giving him a shot. I'm just still stuck on that minus 115 decision, Chris Gutierrez. You don't get any bang for your buck for betting on him to go to decision. So what makes that so valuable, man? You know what I mean? Like plus 450 for the TKO. Can you see a finish here by Gutierrez on, on Munoz? No, Derek. I, I mean, when when is the last time, I guess, oh yeah, when is the last time uh, Edgar has been finished? Or Munoz? Five fights ago. Huh? M- last time Munoz has been finished? Yeah. You said Edgar. Yeah, Munoz. Oh, Munoz, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, it's all good, brother. Um, the last time that he was finished, man, was, shoot. If ever, man. Let me see. Yeah, you have to go down. I don't think he's ever been finished. No, all decisions, seven decision losses. 
you got to go down the list. So I don't see the, the that's for me, the plus 450 TKO makes a lot of sense. Munoz is hard to put away, but I'm still in shock with you, man. I'm right there. Minus 115 for the decision. I think the longer this fight goes, the more Edgar uh, Munoz, excuse me, I keep messing <laughs> that one up. The uh, Munoz has to be able to depend on his experience. And we've seen him in these kind of fights, man. He never says quit and he's always there. I think it's going to matter to the judges. I think there's going to be an interesting one when it comes down to who get uh, who gets debilitated first. If you remember, man, I was betting heavy on Jimmy Rivera against Pedro Munoz because I said if Jimmy Rivera can beat him up with the kicks, it's over. Well, the exact opposite happened. Munoz butchered <laughs> Rivera's legs and he couldn't fight anymore. I think that's going to be the same battle between these two guys. Munoz loves leg kicks. Gutierrez loves leg kicks. Gutierrez, though, got a little more pop in his shot. In terms of like that actual stiffening, ah, give him something. Listen, man, long story short, give me the youth, give me the vigor in this matchup. And I know it's kind of a common theme. I'm taking the young gun versus the old dog here. But I do think Chris Gutierrez is on a hell of a streak. And I do think that his damage, which once again reigns supreme right now in the current UFC judging, I think the damage will be able to edge out a decision victory. However, my disclaimer, my disclosure to the folks who are watching this program don't take a prop here, man. Rock with that minus 220 money line for Chris Gutierrez, but I'm going to see in a decision. How do you see it? I see this one, Derek, as an extremely close fight again, man, going back and forth. I can see what you're talking about, but for me on this side, man, give me the old dog. Give me the underdog. Give me Pedro Munoz. And actually... Give me the decision, bro. I think he's going to do it. I think he's going to put on a show. I think he's going to be there for the entire fight. I don't see either of these uh, fighters going to sleep, though. Yeah, this is, I mean, tough test after tough test, but this ain't Dominic Cruz and this ain't Jose Aldo, man. This is a winnable fight, but it's going to be tough to win the fight. So we will see. But that is going to be a fun bantamweight matchup right there. Bantamweight just got all the fun fights right now, man.